and my sheep know me. You know, even when Jesus speaks of the Gentiles as the other sheep, not of this pen, he says, they too will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd, the two coming together in this dynamic relationship. The sheep see themselves and their life in reference to the voice and the presence of the shepherd. Do you live your life? Do you see yourself in that context with Jesus? Because kind of what Jesus is saying is that he isn't interested in endorsing a dynamic of religious follow the leader. That's kind of what the hired hands were doing. Follow me here. Do what I tell you. Jump when I say jump. Eat when I say eat. But the shepherd, the shepherd values, the shepherd loves, the shepherd gives his life for the sheep. In his sermon on Psalm 23, Charles Spurgeon writes, It is very easy to say that the Lord is a shepherd. But how then shall we appropriate the blessedness to ourselves? The Lord is our shepherd. Then when we say that the Lord is our shepherd, or when we say the Lord is my shepherd, it means a shepherd to the exclusion of anyone else. There can only be one good shepherd in our lives. Only one person that we follow. I, uh, I recently read a story about a man who was driving his car uh, in the midst of this big blizzard, and visibility was almost zero. And he was going to Morgantown or, or someplace. Uh, and uh, fortunately, as he was driving along in this blinding snow, the man spotted a snowplow driving along the road. And so the man thought, well, why fight the snow when this guy can do it for me? And so he just pulled in right behind the snowplow and followed along the snowplow. Um, and he turned when the snowplow would turn, and he weaved when the snowplow would weave, and he followed right behind. This lasted for about 45 minutes. Uh, the man couldn't see anything, so he just followed the lights of the snowplow. Suddenly the plow stopped, and the driver got out and walked back to the car. and said, excuse me, where are you going? You've been following me for about an hour. And the man in the car responded, well... I'm going to Morgantown. So the snowplow driver responded, Well, you're never going to get there following me. I'm plowing out the mall parking lot. <laughs> Sometimes we find ourselves following someone that we think is good, that we think will lead us to a place that we want to be in, only to find out that that's not the case. Who have you been following? Have you been following the voice of a would-be shepherd, of a hired hand? A voice that seems great until trouble comes and all of a sudden they're nowhere to be found. You know, and we can talk about false shepherds and we can talk about hired hands. Sometimes I think the biggest voice that we struggle with is our own. It's not that we're following a false shepherd. or It's not that we're following some definitive hired hand. It's that we believe that our voice trumps everything else. Yet the problem with sheep without a shepherd is that they never get very far. And they often find themselves in troublesome or tricky situations. Remember the parable of the lost sheep? The sheep without the shepherd? We need a shepherd. We need someone to care for us. We need someone to guide us. We need someone to protect us. And there's only one shepherd that can do that. Because there is only one who, out of the depth of his care and his love for his sheep, would drive himself to lay down his life. In our reading, whenever Jesus mentions himself as the shepherd, he mentions how he lays down his life for them. Verse 11, I'm the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. Verse 14 and 15, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. I lay down my life for my sheep. Verse 17, The reason the Father loves me is that I lay down my life. What makes Jesus the good shepherd? And the very echo of what God spoke of in Ezekiel, 
is his complete sacrificial love for his sheep. For the sole purpose of gathering them within his life and his love. Jesus says that neither the false shepherds or higher hands, they ever do that. So embrace Jesus as your shepherd. See your life in relation to his. Search out, listen to, and feed on his voice in your life. To know Jesus as your shepherd is to know him for your life right here and right now. It is to exist dynamically with him as you go through your life of work or your life of play. You know, so often we, we hear this kind of thing in the scriptures, and I stand up in the pulpit, and I make these appeals and all this kind of stuff, and it sounds really good. And I think sometimes we can think, okay, that, that's great, but what does life look like after that? What happens if we say, okay, Jesus is my shepherd, what happens after that? And I tried to figure out, okay, you know, what could I say would actually describe that, um, I think our psalm expresses it in a better words than anybody ever could. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you want the reality of Psalm 23 in your life, then enter into the relationship of John chapter 10. Because he is the good shepherd. And may we all find ourselves following him. Amen.